crushed bones, burned skin, pierced eyeballs, being cooked alive. All of this was just another day at the office for much of medieval Europe's judicial system. Although it's existed for much of history, today being no exception, the practice of torture reached a particularly gruesome zenith during the Middle Ages. The reasons for implementing the grisly torture methods of the time ranged from everything including politics and religion to what can only be described as evil curiosity. But what exactly were these torture methods, and what were they hoping to achieve? That's what we're going to uncover in today's episode of History Unveiled. As a system of order, feudalism ruled medieval Europe. The king granted land to lords for loyalty and military aid, who then passed on land to lesser nobles called vassals. And this created a pyramid of power with the king on top and peasants at the bottom viewed as resources rather than people. As there was no incentive for the ruling class to house or reform lawbreakers, torture became the go-to punishment. The more gruesome the execution, the stronger the message to deter others from disobeying the law. Societies across Europe devised horrific instruments and techniques to inflict maximum pain and terrorize the population, such as the rack. The rack was a common medieval torture device that was used to extract confessions or information from prisoners. It was a simple but highly efficient tool for inflicting pain and was widely used during the Middle Ages and the early modern period. The rack apparatus consisted of a rectangular frame with rollers at both ends. The prisoner's limbs were tied to the rollers and then the rollers were turned by means of either a handle or a windlass. This caused the prisoner's joints to be stretched and pulled in opposite directions, causing intense pain and often dislocations or even fractures. The rack was often used in combination with other forms of torture, such as beatings, sleep deprivation and starvation, in order to break the prisoner's will and make them more willing to confess or give information. The rack was considered to be a particularly cruel and inhumane form of torture, and its use was often accompanied by a high degree of brutality and sadism on the part of the interrogators. The rack was not only used to extract information, but also to punish and intimidate those who opposed the authorities or challenged the status quo. And on the topic of iconic 70s rock bands, next up, the Iron Maiden. The Iron Maiden is one of the most famous medieval torture methods out there, yet, thankfully, there is little historical evidence to support the claim that it was widely used. This is something medieval people could be thankful about, seeing as the Iron Maiden is one of the most disturbing and creepy torture methods out there. Composed of a coffin-like metal box with spikes on the inside, the Iron Maiden was designed to imprison and impale its victim. While inside the Iron Maiden, interrogators could ask questions and extract information from their prisoner, who would have nowhere to run and nothing to focus on but the pain of their impalement. The Iron Maiden is often used as an example of the brutality and barbarity of medieval society, and it is often associated with the Spanish Inquisition and the witch hunts of the Middle Ages. That being said, the device has become synonymous with the barbarism of medieval torture and is a strong image commonly associated with the Middle Ages. The Judas Cradle The Judas Cradle was a pyramid-shaped structure with a pointed tip at the top on which the victim was made to sit or lie down. The victim's weight would then cause the point to penetrate the body, causing intense pain and injury. His or her hands and legs would be tied so that the weight could not be shifted elsewhere. The victim's feet were commonly tied with each other, with the goal of increasing the pain whenever there was a movement of the feet. The pressure of the pyramid-shaped structure would cause the victim's anus or genitals to be stretched or punctured, and the victim would be left hanging for hours or even days. During the 16th century in Spain, the institution of the Inquisition was widespread, and new and brutal methods of torture were being developed. The Judas Cradle was among the devices created during this time as a means to extract confessions or information from prisoners. Pair of Anguish Also known as a choke pair or a mouth pair, is a reported device from the Middle Ages that was used as a torture device. The device is composed of a pear-shaped metal structure which is divided into spoon-like sections that can be separated by means of a spring or by turning a key. 
It is understood to have been intended to be used as a form of torture by inserting the device into the mouth, rectum, or vagina, and then expanding it, causing gagging or mutilation to the victim. Some of the surviving examples, though not all, also have small spikes at the bottom of each leaf, assumed to increase the laceration to the victim once inserted. The breaking wheel, also known as the Catherine wheel or the Malleus Maleficarum, hammer of witches, was a medieval torture device used for the punishment of criminals, particularly for those convicted of treason or heresy. It was a large wooden wheel on which the victim would be tied and then beaten with heavy iron bars or hammers. The victim's bones would be broken as a result of the beating and death would often come from shock, internal bleeding or infection. The breaking wheel was a highly painful and gruesome form of punishment, and it was often used for public executions as a deterrent to others. The punishment was usually carried out in a public square in front of a large crowd, and it could take several hours for the victim to die. In some cases, the beating would not cause death, and the victim would be left to die of starvation or exposure. Sometimes the executioners or even the local public would feed the victim water and alcohol to minimize the effect of shock and keep them alive and in a state of agony for as long as possible. The breaking wheel was a particularly common form of torture found across England and France for several centuries. In fact, the last instance of its use was in Prussia as late as 1841. It was seen as a mirror punishment, or a punishment that accurately reflected its associated crime, often for highwaymen and thieves. Victims of the wheel would often have their mangled bodies displayed in public for days after their execution. The Impalement Impalement is one of the most notorious methods of torture associated with the Middle Ages. It involved the insertion of a long, sharp stake or pole through a person's body, usually through the rectum or vagina, and then raising the person and the stake into a vertical position. The person would then be left to die slowly, often taking several days as the stake or pole would cause internal bleeding and damage to vital organs. As you can probably imagine, impalement was a highly painful and gruesome form of execution, and it was often used as a form of punishment. It was particularly associated with the Ottoman Empire, where it was used extensively as a form of punishment and execution. The Ottomans also used it as a means of terrorizing and intimidating local populations, and it was used in large numbers during the Ottoman Wars in Europe. That being said, impalement was used all throughout Europe, particularly in Eastern Europe and the Balkans. In these regions, it was often used as punishment for crimes such as rebellion, treason, and banditry. Now, if you're enjoying this gruesome account so far, take a second to hit the like button and subscribe. It helps to grow the channel and unearth more of history's less talked about sites. Next up, the Skull's Bridal. The Skull's Bridal, also known as a Brank, was a form of punishment used in medieval times, particularly in England and Scotland, to punish women who were considered to be scolds or gossips. It was a metal device, humiliatingly similar to a muzzle, that was placed over a woman's head and locked into place, covering her mouth and often including a sharp metal tongue that would press against the wearer's tongue. The Skull's Bridal was designed to prevent the wearer from speaking, and it was often used as a form of punishment for women who were considered to be too talkative or who were believed to be spreading rumors or engaging in other forms of unwanted speech, which usually just meant there was a man out there who didn't like what she was saying. The Skull's Bridal is a textbook example of the ways in which women were punished and controlled in medieval society, and it serves as a reminder of the limits placed on women's speech and expression during that time. It's also an example of the ways in which women were punished for behavior that was considered to be socially unacceptable, while men, on the other hand, were not held to the same standards. As history progressed from the medieval period to the early modern and eventually modern period, the use of these gruesome methods of torture did die out. The rise of humanism meant that there was more and more discussions of what we would now call human rights, which don't mix too well with torture. There are many other theories for why society moved away from torture towards other forms of punishment. 
The philosopher Michel Foucault, for instance, in his book Discipline and Punishment, offers the explanation that public torture was an ineffective use of the body, and that condemning criminals to servitude made more economic sense. Furthermore, getting rid of public torture also minimized the likelihood that rule breakers or anti-establishmentarians could gain public sympathy. Whatever the reason, torture gradually became less and less accepted in society, although in many parts of the world it continues to be used even to this very day. Thank you for watching this video on the grisly torture of the Middle Ages. Make sure to subscribe for more and check out the rest of the channel to discover more of History Unveiled.